Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice differential equation. We have y prime on the left and on the right hand side, we have a quotient 2x minus y divided by x plus 2y. And we're going to be looking for y and don't ask why. y is a function of x. So we're going to try to find the function of x, y, which satisfies this type of equation. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, when you're given an equation, you're kind of looking at a couple of different things. Is the equation exact? If it is, then the solution should be fairly easy. If it's not exact, can you find an integrating factor to make it exact? Or does it uh, yield to any type of substitution? Or is it any known type of equation? Because certain types of equations have certain types of solutions. There are numerous sol solution methods, including the numerical ones, but in this channel, we're not talking about numerical methods. It's, numerical analysis is something that I'm not a big favor of, but it has applications, obviously. Anyway, so whenever you have an equation like this, and we've done similar equations before, one thing to always check is if our equation is homogeneous. What is that supposed to mean? Well, homogeneous means that you can, and it could mean different things in different con contexts, but in this context, basically, if an equation is homogeneous, then it allows us to use a special type of substitution which I'm gonna show you now, and we're gonna go ahead and check it. So, here's how it goes. We're gonna go ahead and replace y with ux. In other words, we want y over x to be equal to u. Of course, when you write it this way, you don't want x to be zero, and what happens if x is zero, then that's a separate uh, equation, right? That's a that separate discussion. For example, in the original problem, if x is zero, then you can kind of look at what happens but we're gonna to try to solve it in the general case, okay? So let's go ahead and replace y with ux on the right-hand side. Let's do that first. So we have 2x minus y divided by x plus 2y. Now, I'm not gonna replace x with anything, so it's gonna look like this. And 2y would be 2ux. And now notice that we can factor out an x, and this will give us 2 minus u divided by x times 1 plus to you. And if it's your birthday, happy birthday to you. And happy Father's Day, by the way. It's, it was this Sunday, right? So anyway, so X cancels out and we end up with a U. So if this happens, then your equation is homogeneous. Okay, does that make sense? So we're able to switch from the kind of like the uh, Y world to the U world, okay? And that's how we're going to do it. So since we have y equals ux, of course, this has different implications too. We can now evaluate y prime, right? How do you find y prime? y prime is going to be the product rule, the derivative of u, but you got to remember, u is a function of x because y is a function of x. You're dividing it by x, creating another function of x. And constants are functions of x too, by the way. So don't forget that. So y over x can be constant as well, which is not in this case, but it could happen. So we're going to use the product rule, and that means you, the derivative of u is just u prime. Multiply by x plus the derivative of x, which is 1, multiply by u. It's basically, so it's x u prime plus u, which you can write um, in a similar way or a simple way. Now let's go ahead and uh, substitute that on the left. And on the right-hand side, we're just going to have that, right? We already did that. 2 minus u divided by 1 plus 2u. Now, since we're trying to kind of find the relationship between the u and the x, let's go ahead and subtract u from both sides. This will become 0. And then let's go ahead and make a common denominator. That will give us 2 minus u minus u minus 2u squared divided by 1 plus 2u. And then let's make sure we got it right. Okay, so this should give us uh, negative 2u squared minus 2u plus 2 divided by 2u plus 1. And of course, I want to now write it as uh, u prime as du over dx, because remember, I said u is a function of x, so u prime would be du over dx, 
and it'll equal this expression right here. Oops, there's a minus sign there. Minus 2u plus 2 divided by 2u plus 1. Now, I want to put the x and dx on the right-hand side. So if you do the cross-multiplication and all that stuff, you're going to end up with something like this. Okay. And, of course, we're going to have a du here. And on the other side of the equation, you're going to have dx over x. Now, since we're trying to solve for u first so that we can get the y, let's go ahead and integrate both sides, right? Uh, we can do that, and left-hand side is going to be in u, right-hand side is going to be in x, and we're going to add the constant at the very end, okay? So the question is, how do we integrate this, right, with respect to u? To be able to integrate that, we're going to use what is called partial fractions, one way to do that. Another method is maybe using some type of special substitutions. So here, if you go ahead and factor out a negative 2, you're going to get u squared plus u and then a minus 1, right? Okay. And then now from here, what should we do? Right? To be able to solve something like this, we're going to go ahead and actually we want to write this as perfect square. In other words, we want to complete the square, right? We can pull out a negative 2. That's easily done. But how do we... Okay, great. This is actually awesome. You know why? Because I just realized if you differentiate this, you get 2u plus 1, which is awesome. We have that. Beautiful. So we're going to go ahead and call this t since I already used the u. This will just be dt. Take a look at that. So we basically have dt over negative 2t. <laughs> 2t or not 2t. If you're a tutor, you have 2t's, right? So now we can go ahead and write this as negative 1 half, the integral of dt over t, which is ln, by the way. So this is going to be negative 1 half ln absolute value of t plus a constant. But don't worry about the constant yet because we're going to add that on the right-hand side, which is on the x side, okay? But what is t, what is u? You have to back substitute everything. t is u squared plus u minus 1. Awesome. Now we can go ahead and plug it in and then go to the u word, right? What is u? <laughs> okay. Now this is the left-hand side of our equation. So now if you go back here we, where we integrated both sides, yes. So this was integrated and we found an expression in u. But on the right-hand side, we should also have absolute value of ln x plus c. So let's go ahead and add that here, ln absolute value of x plus c. That's where we add the constant because you don't need constants on both sides, right? That's just going to be a constant. Now, there's a couple of things you can do about it. Uh, you can write this as the square root of something. But do we really need absolute value? I think we do. Uh, so... I can try to bring these two together. So here's, the, here's what we're going to do. Since y is equal to ux, u would be y over x. So you can go ahead and replace this with y over x, and you're going to get something like this. Absolute value of that, negative 1 half ln. And then we're going to go ahead and on the right-hand side, just write the ln absolute value of x plus c. Now, again, if you wanted to go further, you can go ahead and move this here as a power and then put the LNs together, set it equal to a single LN, so on and so forth. But I don't think you really need that most of the time, even if you're taking a class. If you leave it like this, most of the time it should be okay. But always check with your professor. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then... Be safe, take care, and bye-bye.